Windows Millennium Edition, also known as Windows ME. You know, the version of Windows that has possibly the worst reputation out of all of them. However, Windows ME actually had a lot of advanced technologies for the time, specifically around networking. Remember that Windows ME was released in the year 2000, right at the peak of the dot-com bubble. It's also an interesting operating system because it was the last Microsoft operating system released in the Windows 9X series, based on DOS. One of the biggest, if not the single biggest change in Windows ME is the restricted access to real mode MS-DOS. The idea was that to restrict access to real mode it would decrease boot time and increase stability. But of course Windows ME is probably known for having the worst stability of all of the Windows operating systems. So why the hell am I looking at Windows ME? Because it's an incredibly fascinating piece of operating system history. I also have incredibly fond memories not only attached to it, but the DOS era in general. If you go back to some of the earliest videos on this channel, I'm actually reviewing DOS games. 20 years ago, I was a 10 year old kid in the 90s and pretty much all I did with my time is play DOS games. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be taking a look at the interesting install process for Windows ME. Now there was a few different install processes, but this particular process was for the regular average everyday desktop version of Windows ME. At later videos, we're going to be taking a look at networking and internet browsers, display, games, and stuff like that. Now one of the things about the installer that caught my attention right away is the fact that you could change the Windows directory, like the root install directory. I think that most of the install options are pretty much the same from Windows 95, 98, ME 2000 and even XP, I think things really mixed up when they got to Windows Vista and 7. It's also pretty cool that the operating system is able to detect your locale settings. Remember, this is the year 2000 we're talking about. This was before networking technologies that we use every day and take for granted were really widespread. And really that's one of the things that makes Windows ME such a big leap forward from Windows 98 and 95. So obviously I skipped past the part where the operating system is actually installing and copying files, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Now this is the part where Windows is actually going to detect your hardware and install drivers. Now this is the thing that set Windows ME apart from Windows 98 and 95. For starters, USB support came standard with Windows ME. Prior to ME, you actually had to install USB drivers if you wanted to use any USB hardware. Now that's a pain in the ass. In the universal plug and play section here, it's also doing some networking stuff in the background, which is also a new feature with Windows ME. And of course, like any Microsoft product at the time, we've got to register this thing. And yes, that means we got to put in a serial code. But after we get the registration stuff out of the way, that means we're done, right? But wait, there's more driver stuff. But then after the driver stuff, Windows will actually set up your desktop for you, which I guess is a nice touch. I don't know why it takes so long though. After that part's done, we'll reboot one last time and we'll be greeted with this enter network password prompt. This is the login screen. And the funny thing about this is not only did I just create my account, I didn't have to enter a password. How's that for security? And of course, Windows has to update everything one last time. And we've finally made it to our Windows ME desktop. Now I've got to figure out how to resize this thing so we have a workable display resolution. 